Are you struggling to conceive? You have options, and at Piedmont Reproductive Endocrinology Group, we'll make sure you have the guidance and support you need. Preg is known for individualized fertility care that's unique to every patient. We take the time to provide a reassuring and empowering experience because we believe that you deserve nothing less. Let us help you on your journey to parenthood. Visit us at pregonline.com to learn more. Get the guidance and support you need at Piedmont Reproductive Endocrinology Group. Well, now, so let's see how far we are on the uh, Christmas list here. Mm, okay, so let's see. New tripod, uh, GoPro, and, uh, well, yeah, GoPro 10. Let's make sure we get that right. And then let's see about something for the, um, mm, let's see, something for the musical side of J360 Productions. Tell no one. Uh, let's see, something else for jams. Let's Oh, man, this isn't a Christmas list for anybody else but myself, you know? A little bit of self-serving here can actually open broad doors, I tell you. You know, I'm just doing a lot of Christmas shopping for myself. Wait, what do you mean I gotta buy stuff for other people? Oh, yeah, yeah, I do. It's that time of the year, right? Hmm. Sure doesn't feel like it, but I'll tell you what it feels like right now. It's time for me to go ahead and start this series up. Welcome to the j Show here on J360 Radio! Are you struggling to conceive? You have options, and at Piedmont Reproductive Endocrinology Group, we'll make sure you have the guidance and support you need. Preg is known for individualized fertility care that's unique to every patient. We take the time to provide a reassuring and empowering experience because we believe that you deserve nothing less. Let us help you on your journey to parenthood. Visit us at pregonline.com to learn more. Get the guidance and support you need at Piedmont Reproductive Endocrinology Group. Okay, round two. Name something that's not boring. A laundry? Ooh, a book club. Computer solitaire, huh? Ah, oh, sorry. We were looking for Chumba Casino. That's right. Chumbacasino.com has over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. Full work limited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Hey, what's going on, J360 Legion? How are you all doing tonight? This is J-Man, of course, and welcome back to the J-Man Show, if I haven't scared you off already, for episode 231. Indeed, indeed. Back on the one that started it all, and it's like feeling, and it's feeling really good, man. You know, I'm actually enjoying myself. I don't think I'll be going too all in on a bunch of crazy broad topics, and I hope I don't have to roast anybody, because right now, the only thing I want to roast right now is my nuts. Chestnuts. Anyway, uh, so, <laughs> hey, I can't get out of my own show, so um, one way or another, I'm still stuck in this dimension. But as I go about doing these things, and I recently broke out of the state institution, because that's where I work now. But the thing is, is that um, I'm doing pretty good for myself, guys. And it's been very interesting, I gotta say, for this next turn of events. Especially what with this being the new season and all, I expect to see a lot of crazier things, but plenty of advancement. And the um, momentum of things has just been phenomenal. A lot of you guys have actually reached out and went above and beyond for, like, Jams 38. I mean, I've... Uh, I've seen this list explode before, but not on this magnitude. So, yeah, we got one hell of an episode coming next week. Mm-hmm. The gift that keeps on giving. Uh, speaking of which, has the holiday season been kind of off to you? You know what I mean? I, and I know 2020 was a shakeup for everybody. But, you know, I like to think that even then, we still attempted to have fun. You understand what I'm saying? Well, there are moments like where I'm looking around at things, and I'm like... A lot of people put the trees up early in November, but I don't know. It's just like, I guess around my area, I don't see too much of the festivities like I used to. Like things used to be really go all out for Christmas. And, you know, now it's just like, huh. And even then Hanukkah came early this year too. And I mean, I know sometimes it usually does, but it, I never seen it come that early. And then it went away. Those eight days went quick. 
But I did totally call it, right? I did say, like, you know, it's a holiday rush, and it's like we're just going to get right through this and go, next thing you know is we'll all be sitting there, and it's January, and we're talking about New Year, New Me, and when when February comes around and it's Valentine's Day, we're all talking about how we're dating ourselves or somebody's having Galentine or can't get the proper seat over at the friggin' restaurant. You know, it, it, it gets kind of... Mm mundane when you think about it sometimes especially with the shift of things but i have a lot of optimism for 2022 uh, see i kind of stammered there because one way or another 2021 felt like the extended form of 2020 to which at the same time we use math right it kind of is but <laughs> you know I, I think things are going to be fine and yes i am still doing the whole westward jump so i ain't worried about that like these things are looking up like after a while i probably won't even be in the eastern side of this country anymore but that's okay you know just go ahead and do what needs to be done and go for everything and go all in and see where we go with this stuff and not only that i got all these screenplays i need to get either i need to direct them or i need to sell them off and uh the market is looking good as far as i know as far as i know and you guys need it because um, I was on SOTA the other night. Yeah, it's weird, right? <laughs> but, you know, it has happened before where I had to do the J-Man show on Thursdays. And this time I went ahead and I uh, waived my time to actually go on SOTA. And when we were talking on SOTA, you know, even then they were discussing that um, it didn't feel like Christmas. Something, something is up. You know, and as much as I like to go ahead and nosedive into like who's been stupid this week, uh, <laughs> even then it's kind of, hmm, am I really doing this because I'm concerned or am I doing this because of, you know, people expect me to, little things like that. But I always think this if somebody really does something bad, such as like, you know, the Netflix walkouts and what Kellogg has recently done to its striking workers. You know, th things like that. You know, I, I have a justifiable reason for doing it because it's a sign of what's going on. And speaking of the Netflix walkout, that's not entirely over. That's still on the whole flavor of the month spin because, see, Dave Chappelle is now supposed to be headlining a comedy event for Netflix soon. But guess what, though? Because some people just don't understand him or other people are just trying to dictate what he says, which, by the way, you can't do because he's a multi-millionaire. And he's one of the best damn comedians on this planet. And an inspiration for me. Because he does not give a F. But people want him to. And you see the thing is he already told the story about Daphne. Which by the way. A lot of y'all sit there and act like Daphne never existed. Which is why I kind of wish that Daphne wasn't on Twitter. And didn't take you know, her own life. Which by the way people on Twitter allegedly about the cause caused the suicide but nobody wants to take responsibility for that but you still want to go after dave Chappelle about that stand-up special and then you had the guy in netflix take the knee i'm like are you freaking serious oh well you know we 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 we, we didn't know what we was doing we, you knew exactly what you were doing you were honoring the deal that you had with dave Chappelle for those specials and you see the thing is as the man is still in top form still performing to the highest of his caliber People want to shut him down because, oh, what? He's telling the truth? He's been doing that ever since, like, 2022. And you see, like, I don't understand why people have are just now getting offended. I don't understand why people are just now, like, all very, very hot under the collar about a few things. Oh, it's taboo. Oh, I can't handle it. Even when I do my own damn series, you know? Because it says on there, hey, this is about feelings. No, it never said that on the J-Man show. It said that, hey, guess what? This is the J-Man show by J-Man made for you, and at the same time, J-Man's own point of view in mind, usually. Oh, yeah, you know, and, and we'll go into that a little bit later because we got plenty of time in the show. But you see, the funny part is, is that a certain individual, a certain activist, if you will, a certain, hey, guess what, this is my time to be relevant right now. <laughs> oh, yeah, he's a writer, too, and an actor, yeah, 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 who is well known for being the, one of the most hated people on friggin' Star Trek The Next Generation, Will Wheaton. Oh, yeah, my name is Will. I'm not Wesley. Please don't tell me shut up, Wesley, because if you do, I'm going to block you into oblivion. Yeah, 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 what a dork. Let me tell you something, all right? 
I feel sorry that people do typecast actors this way, and I feel sorry that, you know, imprinting's a thing in some cases, but you just are that person, and we hated you for being that person, even though you didn't write the whole thing, because we hate the character, not you, but, you know, it's that risk you're willing to take as an actor. You understand what I'm saying? And the crazy thing is, he shows up over the damnedest crap, too. Always over something that doesn't warrant his importance. And, you know, unwarranted self-importance is a disease that we all face, right? Like, even then, I didn't expect to talk about this, but it's like, hey, 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 shut up, Wesley. For real. I don't give a damn if I'm in his party or not. I don't give a damn if I'm on a new writing board and apparently he has to be there, too. One way or another, I don't give a damn. When he gets right down to it, he's over here like, it's very despicable what they do. Words matter. Oh, those... Yes, yes, once again, words matter. But don't we all walk around like we don't give a damn usually? We don't care what people say and stuff. And I know I said this on the last episode. I'm getting tired of meeting people who don't care. But that's usually on, like, serious things. When it comes to comedy, that's what comedy is. Comedy is supposed to be us hanging our hats and laughing at ourselves. We're supposed to be enjoying the, you know, what the satire of what the comedian says. That's their job. But you're going after one of the toppest comedians. Why? Because at the end of the day, you can't stop him. And the cult of personality that surrounds Dave Chappelle is enormous. It is as big as, like, say, George Carlin. And boy, if George Carlin was still around, oh, man, the things that he would say. You know what I mean? And I'm not talking like old George Carlin. But even an old George Carlin is like, you know, <laughs> that's legend. But you know what I mean. Like, if he was in his prime, George Carlin, oh, we can get a moment's peace, man. Like, you know, like, even with Andrew Dice Clay and all sorts of other people, like, these people come back to tell us about ourselves. I mean, like, you had it for a moment where the music industry, like, a lot of old rockers were coming back and talking about, like, what they were speaking out against. And, like, how this, quote, counterculture here is not exactly doing what they were doing a service. You understand what I'm saying? It's just, to me, it's just like right now, it's it's a paradigm shift or something. Let's just say, like, it's shifting in that other direction, and it's becoming more unlikable as we speak. And it just gives me more recourse that, you know what? Like, there are times where I think about hanging up and not doing the J-Man show, but should go ahead and do hangouts and all that kind of stuff. But then I realize, you know, people get on my damn nerves. Then I realize, like, when I speak my piece about, like, the things that go on, I, I go ahead and I have to go through adventures that don't require the tribe and you know the jam show allows me to talk about them so you know it's little things like that you understand you see and as i talk about it and i make fun of all the things that are nothing's you know nothing's uh limited here in the jam show it's not and as it shouldn't be and the thing is i can't cuss though i do sometimes but you know what i mean but going back into the whole Will Wheaton and Dave Chappelle thing before we go a little too. I just want to say, like, why are you over here? Why are you telling all this rhetoric crap? You just want to keep this going, right? Let Netflix do this. Let variety be the spice of life. Let this whole thing happen. Or even better, Will Wheaton, how about this? How about you and Kurt Cameron go do a Christmas movie that nobody gives a damn about, where everybody likes each other and there's no sort of struggle? And you know what? God will find a way. Yeah, all that kind of crap. Why don't you go do that stuff, you know? You want to be all touchy-feely and crap? Go to Lifetime. Don't worry about Netflix, you know? Let Netflix do what it's supposed to do. Which, by the way, that investment that Netflix is doing to try to make all the animes into live action, yeah, that's really going well because they just canceled Cowboy Bebop. Which, at the same time, I, I think, didn't I weigh in on it? I think I probably said a few things about it. But at the end of the day, I knew it wouldn't hold a candle to the actual live, um, you know, I know that the live action wouldn't hold a candle to the actual show because the actual show, one, is animated, and two, like some of the storylines that they cover in that you know, wouldn't transfer well to live action anyway. They would have to take, like, liberties and go its own way, which at the same time, it did. And that's okay that it went ahead and did. But, you know, they're still going to try this experiment again with something else. I can't wait to see Netflix's version of Assassination Classroom. I can't wait for that because you know it's coming or anything Dragon Ball related. I give it time. But the thing is, though, it's like, why, why would you have to be like, you know, trans lives matter and all that stuff? Yes, once again, yes, they do matter. But the way you go about it and stuff, and you're trying to go after Dave Chappelle because you want a little cred or you want a little bit of attention and stuff. And I think he got ratioed on Twitter for it. And it's like, well, damn, you late as hell. 
But, you know, once again, this is that kind of logic from people like that when they want to come in and have that stuff riding again. And even as I speak about it, it's like it just goes to show no matter what you do and how successful you be, there's always somebody else out there that has a problem with you and will go above and beyond to let you know this thing. And the most important thing you could do, because I've said this and I'm always going to say it, stay mad. Give them one hell of a show, folks, because at least they'll be tuning in every week. You understand what I'm saying? Like, there's a, you know, there's a lot of people that I don't like that got either banned from jams or at the same time I told them off on this program and they're listening all the time because I live in their head rent free. And at the end of the day, they could hear me laughing in the back of them, you know, which by the way, (laughs) you know, things like that. Let that echo in your mind. As a matter of fact, you know, there's some kids out there that say J-Man's epic and you know what? They write. And truth be told, like, um, it's just interesting how, you know, you're going to go after somebody for doing their job. I can only imagine these other comedians out there. See, because I never see myself as a comedian. I never do, believe it or not. But I know that there are people out there that really want to be the next big stars in comedy. And as I look at it, I'm like, you know what? Okay, you got a set. Run with that set. And if it's something that, you know, once again... You got to have different styles of it. I mean, do you have your blue comedy or do you have your green comedy? Do you have your clean comedy? Do you have your observational comedy? Do you have like all those things set in a row? And if, don't just rely on dick jokes and bad jokes. You know what I mean? Spice it up a little bit. Shift it. Like, you know, have a repertoire of things to talk about and make sure like it's relevant to what's going on because, you know, hey, truth is a lot more funnier than fiction. And, you know, fiction doesn't imitate truth, right? So it's like little things like that. If you can go ahead and work with that skill set and you have the ability to deliver it, and those that don't usually are writers. And if you are a comedy writer, which, you know, now that I identify with, you know, it's like, hmm, you know, just work with it that way and don't be. And for God's sakes, don't worry about who you offend. Everything's offensive. Everything is, you know, a problem. And you gotta call it out. Yeah, I wonder where that bimbo is now. Yeah, I said it, and I totally don't feel any remorse for saying it. Because she caused a lot of problems for quite a lot of creators out here. And needless to say, like other people... I I live in a day and age where, you know, the dislike button is now... um, rendered mute i mean you see it but it doesn't mean anything i I live in the day and age where people you know can't handle criticism if somebody says oh you suck you know like what what? (laughs) and i don't know if i maybe i'm speaking from my quote old age now but you know when i was in my early 20s and stuff and i had to deal with critiques criticisms all sorts of like oh i don't understand what your skill set is oh i i don't understand what j360 productions is about and i gave you a damn promo and stuff like i had to ride those waves and it shaped me into becoming more adamant about the things that i do because once again i have something to say and a lot to prove so when i look at people nowadays who get like their first dose of criticism and they're in the same age as me, and they fall apart, and they're like in a crater of their own sadness, and I look at them, and I'm like, good lord, (laughs) who hurt you? And then I would laugh and keep going. Probably pull the person up out of the crater, but like I said, I can't save everybody. So it's like little things like that, but once again, you gotta take this stuff in stride, and you gotta keep on going. I mean, granted, your fans will be there for you. Granted, the people that, you know, uh believe in you they'll probably be there for you and stuff but it goes like this if you're sitting there and you're um how can i put it if you're sitting there and you're only expecting to be universally renowned and everybody to like you you're already asking for trouble i'd rather be hated by quite a lot of people and respect it by a, a tribe of people than to worry about like you know oh my god what are you gonna like me this week is everything gonna be okay oh i'm gonna See how I like that? That's that's anxiety and practice, folks. Stop it. Just 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 stop it. <laughs> Live your life for you. And if you're gonna do comedy, comedy's already hard. Cause a lot of people there's gonna be that people that get you, and then there's gonna be people that don't get you. And then they get offended anyway. So give them one hell of a show. Let's just do the damn thing. 
let's just make this like the last show ever. Scare the living hell out of them, but at the same time, give them something to think about, and then you know what? You probably get a few laughs in there, and that's fine. And those young comedians, and, and I mean like comedians that really haven't gotten their own set or the Fox shows or any of the other stuff like that would usually come after you um, break, uh, break through, you know? I would say just keep on going at it and don't worry about what these um, Pastor Prime players think about or any of these uh, feminist activists or, you know, people who allegedly have jobs but they don't really have jobs come up out of the woodwork to tell you about. If you got something to talk about, you got something to say, do it, man. And it isn't even about, like, um, it isn't even about, like, who, if what, what side of the fence you play, whether you're hetero or whether you're of the alphabet group. It is what it is. But if you got something funny to say, and if you got something to put out there, like Mario Cantone, one of the one of the greatest gay comedians ever, telling it like it is. But hey, and guess what? He was on Dave Chappelle's show. So once again, these these reaches that people do, it's just it's it's outstandingly stupid, and unbelievably disgusting. But hey, I've said my piece. Shut up, Wesley. There. And I hope I get blocked. I hope I get blocked. Ooh. Ah, I, you know, and I feel good about it. Because you just got a preview of how I'll be celebrating. Other than that, though, uh, as far as how Christmas is going, yes, it is still Christmas time. And you know something? Hopefully next J-Man episode, I probably will nosedive into actually talking about a few things or give you guys a couple of Christmas stories because you deserve it. And we shouldn't be enjoying this time of the year. Which, by the way, a lot of a lot of people said, you know, call it holiday. Call it this, Jay. You don't want to offend nobody. Yes, I do. Oh, yes, I do. I hope that you take it all in stride because I'm going to say Christmas a lot. And Christmas is open invitation. I am non-traditional when it comes to the holidays. Come as you are, but at the same time, don't try to piss on me and say that it's raining. And at the end of the day, don't expect for me to bend over backwards for you. Because if I ever try to do that, I'm swinging a bow staff and I'm hitting you in the face. And that's me talking to society. Nothing to do with abuse. It's just I ain't going to take your nonsense. This is the end of the year. This is the time to actually have fun and excitement like you know we made it we won 2021 you know like think about it if you're all alive and healthy at this point and you know and i mean healthy i mean mentally strong i mean all that kind of stuff you got then i'm giving you something here that's something to be proud of that we actually made it this far and you know like uh yeah it's the holiday rush so we'll talk a little bit about some holiday stuff in addition to like um you know, I found out that this is a two-in-one because, like, right now we got the holidays here and then we got, like, you know, New Year's Eve, which is, like, years in in J360 terms. And you know something, uh, years in this year is going to be interesting because it doesn't end with the J-Man show this time. Matter of fact, it's Jams. Jams 39 is actually a years in episode. So I don't know what you guys got planned. I don't know what y'all doing. I don't know what is going down about that. But you see, like, I know where I'm going to be at. All right. So I'm going to be doing the show that night, regardless what. I'll try to have, like, all the stuff lumped in. If you guys want to go ahead and do your submissions for that, um, not right now, no. But I'll say next Thursday, maybe you could start. And that way I'll have, like, the new submission form for 39 all set and ready to go. So you don't have to make or break, okay? Make it seamless, you know, if you will. And by the way, don't try to give me suggestions on, like, submissions and crap. Please don't do it. I just made you something new in addition to keeping the old way of submitting open to you. It's an option. The problem is is that you got some entitled, almost did it, some entitled jerks out there. Yeah, yeah, there we go. That thing that, oh, God, yeah, I could go ahead and dictate how, how things would be distributed. And I'm like, you know what? No, you can't. And I ended up blocking him in the submission on that one because, see, I already told him about himself. And I've never requested tracks from this individual at all. And I really looked back and I found out that his episode was episode 20. And even then, that was the episode where he fell apart like, you didn't present us right. <laughs> yeah, I know I did. Because I presented him just the same way as I present anybody on the show. See, the thing is, I can't sit there and be like, James is a three to four hour show, okay? I can't sit there and be like, oh my god, I hope I cater to this one individual when there's like 19 other people on the thing. You get my drift? And then like some people when they try to promote themselves and they'd be like, you know, you can listen to me on here, but also the other people too. And it's like, once again, 
there's a classy, classier way to do this. But when you give the rope to people, instead of climbing up, they usually hang themselves. I remember my mentor, like, and she's a great woman. She's somebody I really respected because she was a better teacher than the one teacher I had at my older college years ago. Oh my god, I hope that I hope that other woman is rotten somewhere, dying, decaying, or whatever. And truth be told, if I ever saw her out in the street and she wanted water, I'd not give her any. I'm sorry, that's just me. I'm petty. <laughs> Actually, that's too cold. I'd give her some water, but it would probably be a quarter of the bottle. Hey, the rest she has to find on her own. But the thing about it is, for my real mentor, though, like she really, uh, really helped me to find my voice in the written word. And not only that, like, like she told me a lot about that kind of stuff. Like when it comes to collabs and everything, it's like you know, like you can only help people so much. So that's why, I like, sometimes feeling my opinion on people is pretty low. But you know, it's because like you know, standards have fallen. People don't try anymore. People are on that race to the bottom, and you know they hit the ground. But you got to go to the subground. You, you got to go to the um, quantum levels of this stuff now because, like, apparently there's no limit for losing. And you ever really lose is when you give up. And I just see it all the time. And I'm like, with me, I don't have it, man. I, I don't have the patience for that kind of stuff. And I really don't. Like, I look at it and I'm like, you know, you're already hurting yourself by acting like, oh, nobody cares and stuff. And you know what? Maybe they don't. But do you give a damn enough? Then let's go on ahead and do this thing. You know? It's just like, well, all this stuff, what, um, well, what I'm doing with J360Productions.com. And just about all the stuff I'm doing with J360TV. Okay, so you know what? If it doesn't happen Tuesday, it's probably on deck for Wednesday. If it don't happen Wednesday, well, I got Thursday. You know what I'm saying? I have days to do these things and I take my time to experiment and have a good time. Some of you've seen it on Instagram. Oh, uh, and which is funny. Cause there, there's all these things where people are like, you show what you do. You can't do any. Stop telling me what I can't do. That's another damn thing. Hey, while we're on the subject, let me just say this. All right. Unless it's anything that's really serious or if it has something to do with litigation, don't tell me what I can't do. I'm not your damn child. I'm somebody's child, but I'm not your child. I'm not your damn dog either, and not even the one that helps you out from time to time. Little sup, dog. No, I ain't that either. I might not even be your damn friend as far as I'm concerned, even though I have them, but you know what I mean. It's so amazing how people will go as far above and beyond, whether it's entitlements or my narrative, fueled by that stupidity, to go ahead and try to tell you what to do. It's different if, like, you're causing bodily harm or you're trying to rob something or whatever, but if it's like, intentionally harmless or if it's like one of those things where it's like it's not going to affect you in the long run or something slow to f- you know slow to f down it's like little things like that but of course though i'm asking for much because during this time of the season and stuff people's uh things are amplified but you know seasonal depression is real so if you can give one gift this year do try to be kind do try to be kind. I'm working on that too. Like at my core, I'm a good man, but you got to remember this good is not nice. And there are times where it's like, you know what, when I'm really, really tired of stuff, things need to be said. It's kind of like if you're the most beautiful woman on earth and you're over there strutting your stuff and looking good and all that kind of stuff. And I'm looking at you because you don't cross me at one point and I'm really, really tired of you. This is me with my hockey stick and I'm swatting you and your thought ass out my life. That's what I do. And to be fun, and let's say this though, because I have to clear it up, it's not abuse. It's a symbol of me throwing you out. It's just like like how I always have that gif of throwing somebody in the dumpster. You're dead to me if you see that thing. And truth be told, it's like you know what? That's why I like smaller circle, bigger vision. And my vision is in the IMAX form these days. But I don't do that to people in the Jam Fam, and I would not do that to uh, my wonderful lady, and I wouldn't do that to, like, you know, Al and all the rest. Especially the crew from SOTA. These are people that have my respect. <laughs> but a lot of you, a lot of these other people out here, man, the entitles, that's what I call them. Ooh, boy. What do you mean you don't like me for me? You're a pain in the ass, and not a good one. And while we're on the subject here, you think that the stuff that you just did out there was revolutionary of sorts, right? (laughs) Wrong. It was annoying. Which, by the way, just be yourself when it comes to these things. 
I, I see it all the time where people are trying so hard to be revolutionary or try to take filmmaking back to its roots or try to be the WonderCon. And after a while, you'll realize these titles have no meaning because everybody uses them. I want to be the iconoclast! Yeah, okay. Well, have fun checking your own ass out, then. <laughs> Little things like that. Ah, oh, man, I tell you. Which, by the way, um, as much as that, that's enough of me throwing stones at society right now, because, well, no, it isn't. No, it isn't. Because there's always something new going down. But, for this episode, anyway. Like, as I'm sitting here looking at the power play, I am so glad that that series is back into focus right now. Because, like, Bioshock 2 was overstaying its welcome. <laughs> And it's finally done. So if you, um, it's going to make its YouTube debut later on this week, you know, because sometimes I like to have like Twitch have its uh, exclusive viewing, you know, beforehand. So if you haven't seen it yet, it is on twitch.tv slash J360 TV. And you can look at that Bioshock 2 endgame. It was actually pretty seamless that day. And I think I was in 60 frames per second. So it actually went really good. So whatever like worked that time, I'm taking it all in because I'm sure as I fire up another episode for you guys, I'm going to be running through the Hurt Locker on that one because, hey, last episode was just so good. You know, I was going to top that. (laughs) <laughs> little things but you know like i said we'll, we'll have something running in a little bit i'm just on a victory lap right now and not only that i think i had a you know i had a bunch of quips for you guys i'm still working on like you know um how to present that stuff out there too because sometimes i get so into the game so it's just little things but you guys had a good look mm-hmm. of like what's to come um as we grow that series so especially if you're paying attention to instagram.com slash j360 productions you have an idea But, yep, I'm looking over my stuff right now. Uh, I know a lot of y'all are still out there trying to get your PS5s and stuff like that. And, hey, keep fighting the good fight. I'll join you in 2023 when the Wolverine game comes out. Because, you know, that looks sick. (laughs) And by then, I don't think there will be shortages. So, yeah, I'll be joining you at that point. And, you know, nothing to worry about. But right now, though, it's time for me to go ahead and conquer like, what that main series of the Power Play is about. And I'm also bringing back some additional um, features for J360Productions.com. They're exclusive for that, so you know, stay tuned on it, okay? And addition to other things. What am I going to do with that damn Facebook page now I think about it? Hmm. That's ah, floating in the back of my mind, folks. <laughs> Always working, you know. And then as I sit here with my mountain... No, there ain't no mountain, dude. Hmm. Yeah, that's that's crystal crystal light lemonade. What the hell am I talking about? Okay, mm, it looked like Mountain Dew there for a moment. Well, that's because I got all these green LEDs flying around. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So always working. And but yeah, the power play's looking good. I would like to actually do a Christmas party version of that series. But I've already said too much. I'm not gonna throw that at you guys right now. But I'll tell some certain people that need to know. So I'll work on that. And as I sit here, I got Final Draft on the side, and um, hmm, I got some stuff to go ahead and finish up writing on, so we will work with that too. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. And not to mention, I want to get this particular short story done at least by next week. And who knows, maybe I'll read it to you guys. Yeah, why not, right? You know, shoot, I made it. (laughs) I can see, like, some things coming for you guys, but I got plenty of things happening for y'all. So, you know, you just have to stay tuned on a few things. Oh, and not only that, uh, speaking of which, uh, these Christmas commercials, man, are they really trying so hard or what? Like, I think the best one I saw was the Best Buy commercial where, like, um, you know, the Best Buy people delivered something to uh, to the North Pole and they woke Santa up and then it turned out that they were the elves. Like, I thought that was actually kind of funny. You know what I mean? The problem is, is that on the streaming networks I'm on, they show it every damn time. And I'm like, I used to love this commercial, but now it will incur my wrath. But then they always have something else come after it, too, like the Target commercials. Target commercials are usually um, on point during Christmas, though. It's not too bad. But damn, I'm glad I don't work for them. I remember, um, I, remember I did work for them. They were like, oh, yeah, you know, you, you, don't get, you, you might get Thanksgiving off, but you got to be here early in the morning for, for, for Black Friday at like 2 o'clock. I was like, two o'clock but but, uh, well i get that but i'm like um i'm not even in the state at this point and then they were like oh we gotta be here it's like 
no, I don't. Because there was no way for me to be there. But I think um, the funny part is, is that they didn't like me anyway, and I didn't like them. So, you know, it was an amicable breakup. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I think I went back into delivering sodas at that point, too. Like, you know, so. Yeah, I used to work in long distance, man. Thank God I am not doing that anymore. <laughs> I mean, it's fun for like when you start out and all that kind of stuff, but when they schedule you rigidly, and nowadays I guess they're starting to get the point that, hey, guess what? Uh, people need to spend time with their families. It took us a pandemic to understand this, but yeah, 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 now we finally get it. Oh, which, by the way, uh, if you're enjoying yourself during your gathering, uh, stay tuned because Omicron's coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, by the way, I really shouldn't be talking about this stuff too much because as I uh, as the season comes for this series and I go ahead and I transfer all this stuff over to YouTube, they'll probably be like, are you talking about variants and, and things that happen in our lifetime? You shouldn't do that. You should talk about more culturally understanding things. And which, by the way, I don't know what the hell that is. But, you know, I'm sure they have an idea. You know, it's kind of like the politically correct joke. It's a very rare animal. It's out there hanging with uh, Sasquatch and um, Loch Ness because, you know, we never do see them at point blank. But they're there looking at us. Mm -hmm. I'm sure one way or another I'll probably catch that animal and write it down. And even then I probably wouldn't be able to laugh at it because it's, it's weird. Political correctness is weird, you know. But that's just me just saying, like, you know, it's just stupid stuff that, that's in our society. The narratives will never end. Matter of fact, they get a lot worse when there's, like, real problems going on. Like, you know, the opioid crisis or the energy crisis or, like, homelessness or, like, you, you know, um, well, shoot, the Build Back Better. We'll have to see how that goes because that's supposed to be the big infrastructure fix. But at the same time, I don't know if it's just another way to go ahead and tax the uh, working class while the rich fatbacks get to sit back and enjoy themselves, saying, like, hmm, I wonder how I can make some more money by squeezing the grape this time. You know, little things like that. But all in all, though, I mean, like, you know, we're going to have some fun this holiday. Uh, any of y'all got some stuff that y'all want to throw at me from time to time? You know, the email's right there at j360productions.outlook.com. And um, speaking of movies, uh, yes, I know on SOTA we are just dragging the Spider-Man franchise through the muck. <laughs> in case you ain't realized, though, like, on that show, like, yeah, we really go all in on, like, what Fiji and all the rest of them are doing, but... You know, to, to be fair, sometimes it comes from a world of passion. Like, you know, when you look at some of these reactionaries and all this other stuff to, like, what these uh, social elites in Hollywood are doing and things. Yeah, it comes from a world of passion. And to be honest, like, you know, the only that's, like, the only problem I had. If they were consistent with the spider sense and if they were very consistent about Spidey actually fighting and then not only... Um, just let Tom Holland Spider-Man be Spider-Man. He doesn't need no damn mentors like anything. You know, isn't it funny how people use that as like a story arc? Well, you know, uh, uh, because it's like one of the oldest story arcs ever. Like, you know, okay, so, you know, Luke Skywalker's story and his mentor was Obi-Wan, right? Who was his father's mentor. You know, things like that. That's that's understandable. It's one of the oldest ways to go about it. But everybody's like, yeah, you know, they made Batman older so he could probably mentor Superman on how to be a better hero. Oh, yeah, guess what? Hey, Spider-Man's in the Civil War movie, so Tony Stark can mentor Spider-Man how to be a better hero. Oh, wait, look, in the second uh, Homecoming S movie, uh, Spider-Man's dealing with Nick Fury so that he can learn how to be a better hero like in that show Ultimate Spider-Man. It's just like, give it a damn rest, okay? Some people don't need mentors. Some people hit the ground running and they're okay. Now, a little helping hand now and again is fine, but, you know, some of y'all go too far on that trope that it's like, it, it gets cumbersome. It gets to the point where it's like, oh my God, doesn't need it. Just let the character be the character, damn it. It's all we ever ask, you know, to sum it all up. At least that's what I asked for. I'm still going to go to the movie anyway. I mean, why not? It's Spider-Man. <laughs> but you know what I mean. It's just, it's just wild to me like how all this stuff comes out. People go, oh my god, it's happening. A second trilogy. Oh my god. Well, yeah. <laughs> you know, see what I'm saying? 
Because at least then you're focusing on him. I mean, it's not like a whole ensemble of things like this movie is. But oh, speaking of which, um, I'm glad that Spider Verse is coming back. That's gonna be looking and that's looking slamming so far. Uh, the Sonic the Hedgehog 2 trailer came out, and man, all the memories of playing Sonic 2 on Genesis, because come to light, it is incredible. Oh, I love it. Mm. Everything that's played out in this, and Jim Carrey looking like Eggman more, phenomenal. And uh, speaking of which, my man Knuckles is in there. I'm like, yes! Oh, man, this is going to be friggin' awesome. April's going to be lit. And I don't care what variants floating around out there. I'm going to be sociable and go. <laughs> Simple as that. Oh, man. Mm-mm-mm. Damn, it feels good. No, I ain't going to finish the rest of that. Y'all do that for me. All right. <laughs> but, yeah, like, uh, for all this stuff, it's really, really looking good. And um, as far as I'm concerned, I got nothing more than that for right now. So, you know, I've talked your ear off long enough for this particular episode of the J-Man Show. So I just want you guys to... Don't give in to all this activism crap. Like, live your life. Enjoy the holidays. Take note of things. If you're going to go to a party or whatever, be safe. Be smart. You know what I mean? Don't breathe on each other entirely unless you're doing the do. And even then, that's at your own risk. (laughs) But until then, though, this is the J-Man signing off. You guys take it easy. And, of course, Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays to y'all. All All right? Peace. Judy was boring. Hello. Then Judy discovered Jumbacasino.com. It's my little escape. Now Judy's the life of the party. Oh, baby, mama's bringing home the bacon. Whoa, take it easy, Judy. The Chumba life is for everybody. So go to Chumbacasino.com and play over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. Chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. With the Lucky Land Slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. This is your captain speaking. Uh, we've got clear runway and the weather's fine, but we're just going to circle up here a while and uh, get lucky. No, no, nothing like that. It's just these cash prizes add up quick. So I suggest you sit back, keep your tray table upright, and start getting lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details.